So in 2013, the board informed staff, AVTA staff, that they wanted us to consider electrifying our fleet. We had gone to the board previously wanting to replace some buses that had reached our useful life with a similar diesel-powered bus um, so we can continue having good service to our passengers. They informed us at that moment that we, they wanted us to consider electrifying our fleet. They didn't want us to buy any diesel buses at that time. They wanted us to research this and see if it was something that could be done. No data to lean on. There was no other transit agencies in the United States that we knew of doing anything like this. So we spent a lot of time sitting and talking and, and uh, discussing how we could make this work. We were at a CTA conference in Anaheim, California in about 2013 and uh, we were still trying to figure out if we were to electrify our fleet how we would be able to run a bus uh, take a diesel bus that can run all day long and put an electric bus that has a starting range of 150 miles the, there was no solution for that we would have to bring the bus back to the depot charge it up and send it back out again and that takes time it doesn't fuel up or, or charge back up like a diesel bus would fuel up so there's about a four hour gap there where we wouldn't be able to run the bus, we would be charging it. So we were trying to figure out how to solve that, that dilemma and not have to buy two buses for every, every single diesel bus that we were currently operating. So while we were at this conference, we met the folks from WAVE. They had a smaller system uh, that they had already built and tested in Utah and they were having great success with it. And realistically, the day that we met the WAVE folks is the day that we were able to put the last piece of the puzzle together to know that we could actually make this work. Uh, we purchased two BYD buses shortly after that, powered them up with the 50 kilowatt WAVE inductive charger. We then collected about a couple of months of data and realized that 50 kilowatts wasn't going to be enough to trade one bus for one bus. Going by the data that we've collected so far, we realized we needed about 250 kilowatts to charge the bus in 10 minutes, gain about 18 to 20 miles of range in the bus. We would uh, actually be able to operate the bus all day long. So we tasked them with that feat. It took about a year for them to prove the technology. Uh, they simulated a charge and then we were on path to do this entire electrification project change our fleet out from a, a full fleet of 75 diesel buses to what will now grow to 80 electric buses. Challenges that did arise, uh, we brought the waves attention, they dealt with it quickly, promptly, and effectively, so that the problems that weren't redundant problems, they were, they were solved and done and we moved forward. As far as maintenance goes, there's no moving parts, so there's, there's nothing for us to do. We do a quick inspection of the charge plate, we run it over a charger, if it transfers energy, there's nothing else for us to do. The battery management on the bus takes over from there and it controls everything. The wave charger, as soon as you pull up on top of the charger, you set the brake, kneel the bus, put it in neutral and open the doors, it automatically starts charging. So the operator doesn't have to have any concerns. They can concentrate on strictly doing their job. When they're done at that location where they're charging and it's time to go, all they have to do is take any one of those functions away, um, close the doors, uh, put the bus in drive, release the parking brake, any one of those functions turns the charger off and they can just drive away effortlessly. They don't have to worry about it and it takes all the human element out of it. It makes their job a lot easier. In our first million miles, we avoided 285,000 gallons of diesel fuel that didn't have to get refined, at least for our purposes. And that was $585,000 in savings. We calculated that we offset 1.2 million tons of uh, CO emissions, greenhouse gas emissions. You can't talk enough about how you're cleaning up the, the work environment for the bus operators and the maintenance technicians by getting rid of all that harmful diesel exhaust that they're normally used to inhaling and ingesting all day long. Point that I don't hear brought up enough as far as I'm concerned throughout the industry, but whenever we're at a panel or Mark and I are speaking to people, we always want to emphasize, make sure we emphasize to them the, the health benefits to the bus operators and the maintenance technicians. The WAVE system allows us to be able to run this bus all day long and not have a diesel bus anywhere in our fleet. The entire electrification project is about a 50% cost savings so far. 
We get phone calls or we get tours just about every day of the week. And when we talk to operators, they bring up concerns about the range of the bus versus the length of their routes. We take them over and show them our wave stations and, and how minimally invasive they are, you know, the pads flush in the ground. Our next project will be to install solar panels and battery storage on site and get completely off the grid, charge up the battery storage from the sun during the day, deplete that charge from the batteries back into the buses at night and be completely um, off the grid. I'm sure I can speak for everybody on staff. We're really proud of this whole thing. No, it's remarkable technology. I'm still awed by it. Watching Wave go from infancy to, you know, with a 50 kilowatt charger to now the 250s that we have has been a remarkable journey. If we had to do it all over again, I don't see any, any other solution than Wave. It's been a great solution for us.